right, so in my previous video, I demonstrated how to wire the manual changeover switch. And I promised that in my next video, I'll be showing practically how to wire a semi-automatic changeover switch. The semi-automatic changeover switch works in a way that when you have to change over from one supply to the other, it changes by itself. In case your main supply is out, then you will only have to go and switch on your standby supply. So assuming it's a generator, when the main supply goes off, you just need to go to your generator and then switch it on. When you switch the generator on, the changing in the changeover switch happens automatically. All right, so this is a very simple circuit that will involve only two contactors. All right, and I need to say that the contactors you will select to build your changeover switch should be of a rating that will be able to carry the total load of your wire. And so if your total load is 100 amps, you make sure that each of these contactors is rated 100 amps or will have the capability of carrying up to 100 amps current. So we will need two contactors. And then we also need our two supplies. And as I did in the previous video, I am going to use this panel as my main supply. And then I will use this panel as the standby supply. Then here I have a bolt. I'm going to mount the contactors in this small box. And then I will cover it so it will be portable. So at the end of the day, we are going to see a box like this which will be for our changeover switch. And then we are also going to have the consumer unit that will supply our various final circuits. I will have to cut some parts of this box so that it will be able to fit properly. All right, so I'm going to remove this one. All right, so this is manageable, okay. The next thing I'm going to do is that I am going to bring in two indicating lamps that will show at every time which of the supplies is available. So one color will represent the main supply and then the other color will represent the standby. And I think I can still have some space on my box to fix this light. Alright, so let's see how. Okay, so quickly I mark, mark around here, and then I mark around here. We are continuing with the project. And where we have gotten to now, I will need to explain a few things to you concerning the contactor and then how it works and also how the connection is going to be done. For you to get a proper understanding of how the contactor works and how the wiring is going to be done around the contactors, I will need to take you through some drawings and then explanations. All right, and so this explanation is going to be the part one of the whole project. And then after the explanation, I am going to follow the same steps to do the wire. Okay, so uh, just follow, make sure you watch the next video, which is on the practicals or the wiring itself of what I'm going to demonstrate here. All right, and so this is how the inside of the contactor actually looks like. And so it is this terminal and base contacts that we are going to interconnect with the other one to be able to give us our semi-automatic changeover switch. All right, this is one contactor. This is another contactor. And so what is here is the same thing that is here. Okay, when you look at the drawings, we have three pair of contacts that are labeled. So this is one pair of contacts. We have the input and then the output. 
input out input out so these are three main contacts on the contactor now the input is labeled l1 l2 l3 or 1 3 5 and then the output is also labeled t1 t2 t3 or 2 4 6. there are also two pairs of contacts the first one is labeled 13 and then 14 and 13 and 14 is normally open and o and o means normally open then we also have another contact and that is normally closed and c and c is normally closed and it's labeled 21 and then 22. we also have a very important component of the contactor and that is the magnetic coil so we have a magnetic coil inside the contactor and it is also labeled a1 and a2 and that is what when energized attracts all the normally open contacts to the terminals and then opens all the normally closed contacts from the contact in the contactor i am using this coil is rated 220 volts and so we need single phase to energize so now we are going to use one of these contactors to be connected to our main source of supply at the incoming point and then the second one will also be used for the standby supply the standby supply will be connected to the incoming point now the outgoing terminals are actually what are going to the main suite and so we are going to bridge the output and because we are going to bring the output, we have to find a means of ensuring that both contactors will not close at the same time. That is the most important aspect of this connection that we are going to do. Let's use this contactor for our main supply. So our main supply, line 1, line 2, line 3. Then we come to standby supply. And we have line one, line two, line three. What we have to do next is that we are going to connect this line three to line three, line two to line two, line one to line one. All right. Then. This is our three phase consumer unit, also with four terminals. This will represent a four pole breaker. Line one, line two, line three, and then neutral. This one goes to line one, this one goes to line two, and then this one goes to line three. We are going to use 13 and 14. That is the normally open contact here for our neutral line. This is neutral from main supply. This is neutral to our consumer unit. Then, if this is neutral from standby, this will be neutral to our consumer unit. When the main supply is available, automatically this contact should close. To supply power to the consumer unit but this will only happen when the coil is energized okay so now if this is 240 volt coil then we actually need live and neutral to energize it and so we have our neutral line here we are going to connect neutral from here to neutral here so now we are left with only live to energize this contactor. Now, we are going to electrically interlock both contactors so that when one is closed, the other one cannot close. So let's say this is contactor B, this is contactor A. We expect that when supply is available here, this contactor should operate so that power will be supplied to the consumer unit. We have to do this connection in a way that 
Anytime this contactor is operating, this one cannot operate. And so we will take this line from here and we'll actually pass it through the normally closed contact on contactor B before it comes to A1. Alright, so this is how we do it. We come to 21, then from 22, we take it back before it comes to energize the coil on contactor A. So basically, we are going to do the same thing for the standby supply. And so we take neutral from here. A2 is neutral through here. And then neutral. Okay. Now it's left with the light to energize this one. And so let's take it again from line one. From this main supply, it comes to connect to 21. Then from 22, it comes to energize the coil of contactor B. If this contactor is already working before the main supply is restored, then it means this contactor will still not work because of the interlocking. And so we have to provide a means of alerting us when the main supply is available. We are going to use indicating lamps to do that. So this is one indicating lamp. So this is A, this is B. If the main supply is available, lamp A should reflect. And so we are going to connect line 1 here, which we can trace to this point. We can trace line 1 to this point, and then we connect it to this lamp. Now, we already have neutral here, so we just borrow neutral from here. We just borrow neutral from here to the other terminal. And then the same thing will happen here. We can trace L1, L1 on the standby contactor here. And so we connect it to lamp B. Then we will come and take, we can also take neutral from here. So assuming main supply goes up and then lamp A goes up, then you have engaged the standby supply. So lamp B will be on. The moment lamp A comes on, then you will have to switch off the standby supply to make way for the main supply to take over. All right, so this is the first part of our journey to how to wire semi-automatic changeover switch and so the second part will purely be the practical and so during the practical I'll be making reference to these terminals and then these contacts and then these calls all right okay thank you very much I'd like you to subscribe so that you will be notified when the practical work is uploaded. Thank you very much. See you in my next video.